long. Time to go from the legislature to the uh, upcoming elections. I don't mean this fall's elections where everything's on the ballot statewide. I mean just a couple of short weeks from now. In fact, early voting opens, if I'm not mistaken, tomorrow. Uh, Jordan Faircloth is running for judge. He's made the runoff for judge, and he joins us now. Welcome back, man. How are you? I am better than I deserve. Oh, my <laughs> word. Save that <laughs> one to four this afternoon. Uh, yeah, that, that, <laughs> given the Dave Ramsey answer, I love it. Um, we got a lot to talk about. First of all, congratulations on making the runoff. Thanks, sir. Um, that being said, you've been in this position before. I have. Uh, like, we got to, st- I, I don't mean to give you, you know what, but you've called all your friends, right? Like, yes. you've called yes. everybody, hey, this is the date and times. You have to be there. They, they are aware and they know that I was nice last year. Let's just say that okay. after the runoff. And, and this year, let's just say I wouldn't be so nice. Okay. For those that don't Put know that the backstory, the last yeah. year, Last year, Jordan fell short in a runoff by, was it two votes? Two votes. Two. two votes. You think your vote doesn't matter? Jordan lost by two votes last time around. I, there are certain things that will go down in Baton Rouge political history. Uh, that that has to be one in a civics lesson uh, for every campaign. You, you, you stole my line. Every group, every individual I talked to, mm-hmm. I started out with, look, I'm the walking, talking embodiment of a civics civics lesson and that every vote counts so if you have a friend or family member that tells you well my vote doesn't matter my vote doesn't count Mm -hmm. give tell them to give me a call and i will tell them that in fact it does matter and it does count you lose lose by two votes it kind of hits you in the gut a little bit there were a couple of other things going on in baton rouge that day concert uh, my affinity for garth brooks took a nosedive that night yeah Uh, well it's returned but still i will tell you this though some of god's greatest gifts they are on these prayer. prayers. That is, that, that, no, that song, no. came, that thing, song came on. The song came on recently, and previously, every time Garth Brooks come on, I just turn it off. Yeah. I can't deal with that. Yeah. That came on recently. I was riding That's with like my wife. jab every yeah. time now, right? It came on, like, a few months ago, and I was riding with my wife, and she went to change. She said, no, no, let's just listen just, to it. Yeah, just, no. feel it. Let, <laughs> let, it just let it go, baby. Let it sting, and then it'll, it'll show up in the... Uh, Results next time around. Now, we were looking at a bit of a different race this time around, though. Yes. Um, made it to the runoff. How are things different this time around? What's the I, – I hate to put it this way. We're talking about a judge's race. What's the vibe right now? Well, the vibe is, is similar to last year in terms of there's going to be low turnout. You know, it's just voter apathy mm-hmm. on steroids. You know, it seems like we have elections all the time here in Louisiana. And coming off a big election season last fall – and having another big election season this fall, yeah. you kind of stick this in the middle where in the runoff, the only thing on the ballot is going to be this judicial race, and it's only a certain part of the parish, it's the southern part of the parish that's going to be able to vote for it. Mm-hmm. It's it's reminding and telling folks, hey, there is actually an election, and it is important for you to show up for this election. We all know folks, and we do it ourselves, who sit and complain about where we are and where we're going as a city and a parish, but then when it comes to to vote for the right leadership and the right candidates, we stay home and, and neglect to vote. So the task is reminding folks, encouraging folks, and explaining to folks why this election and voting is so important. There are a number of different judges' races, and we can all get lost every once in a while in what judge does what. So the position you're in, the district judge spot you're running for, does what? This In the 19th JDC, we elect judges in a general jurisdiction, which means judges handle civil matters, criminal matters, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. It's the way it's designed. It's the way it should be, frankly, because if you're a good judge, you have the right temperament, demeanor, and you know how to read and interpret and apply the law to the facts. It doesn't matter what issue is before you. Mm -hmm. Here in the 19th, that's what we do. New Orleans, they elect uh, civil law uh, judges and criminal law judges. 19th, we do not do that. It's general jurisdiction. Whoever wins this seat will have to be prepared to do both civil and criminal. That being said, right now in Baton Rouge, there's a lot more emphasis on the criminal. Correct. Uh, In fact, that very same day, that same election day last year, when Garth Brooks took the stage in Tiger Stadium, that same night, College Drive was shut down because of drag racers, street stunt uh, performers, uh, participants, and the like. And that has gone on since then. Crime seems to continually get worse, or the attitude t- towards crime. See, now I'm not. This is not disparaging towards EBRSO or BRPD. They are doing their best every single day, but there's a mentality out there to snub the nose, snub noses at the law. 
a judge can have a role in that. A judge can have a very serious role in that, and it's one that we're seeing, we're feeling the repercussions of right now. Absolutely correct. It's, it's top of mind to voters and the citizenry. When I go out and talk, knock on doors, meet with folks, that is certainly top of mind. And my response is, we can do something. We could stem the tide starting with this election. That's why this is a critical election. Mm -hmm. Are we going to keep electing from the status quo, the same group of folks, the same what I call the downtown crowd, the courthouse gang, or it's the same bucket of quote-unquote candidates who get elected, and this is where we are? Or do we want some fresh perspective, fresh leadership, someone who's not tied to that, who does uh, have the experience, the qualifications, the leadership abilities to make the tough decisions, to show the criminals that they should be fearful of the consequences and not the way we've been going down this road. And, and I am that candidate, and I feel that I have those qualifications to make those decisions. Okay, I'm going to hate myself for the softball yep. here, but why you? Why me? What are those qualifications? Brian, I'm practicing law for 15 years in courtrooms all throughout the state, not just one courtroom and not in front of just maybe one or two judges, but courtrooms all throughout the state handling a variety of complex and diverse issues I know what it takes to be a good judge because I've seen what it takes to be a poor judge because okay. we have far too many of those. The next question is, what makes a good judge? Well, do you have the right temperament, the right demeanor? Do you have the work ethic and the tenacity to do the job the right way? Do you have the capability to understand, interpret, and apply the law to the facts and not be afraid of making the difficult decision, not worried about who may be mad at you for making this decision. No. Balls and strikes. Everybody everybody gets a fair shot. The law is the law. The facts are the facts. Mm -hmm. Those things. I have the temperament. I have the demeanor. My sports background. I'd, I'd never tell folks I, I'm the smartest person in the room, but I will tell you I'm the most competitive and the hardest working person in the room. I'll put myself up against anybody. I know those qualifications, those factors, make me well-suited for this position. And you're not getting someone who is tied to the status quo. You're getting someone who wants to get us out of the status quo. That's why I decided to run last year, and that's why I'm running again this year. I'm even more emboldened for that very reason of, you know what, we can all sit around and complain. We can all sit on the bench and, and not do anything about it. We can get in the game and do something about it. That's why I got in the race last year, and that's why I'm in the race this year, because I want to do something about it, and I have the leadership and the qualifications to do something. Got a couple of minutes left on air with Jordan Faircloth. We're going to talk off air a little bit about LSU baseball yes. uh, as well. Uh, but uh, within these last couple of minutes here, I, I, I've got to ask you, um, one of the things that Baton Rouge Police Chief Murphy Paul seems to continually have a, 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 a grievance with is bonds. Yes. He's tired of arresting the same people over and over again. Earlier this week, we saw a judge retain a $100,000 bond on a, an accused rapist of a child. Meanwhile, out in Ascension Parish, uh, there was a bond. A dude stole, allegedly stole four horses. His bond was half a million dollars. How can we make this translate in Baton Rouge to where we can see something that's tough enough out there to where it's not a revolving door? You're exactly right. We have to make the violent criminals fear the consequences. Judges have the discretion to do that, as you said, in terms of setting bond. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to not be afraid to make the tough decisions in terms of setting bond. Well... I want to be lenient because that's just the, the way, the right way to do it. No, we have to be firm. We have to be strong. We have to set an example, if you will, to where we're not reading about different judges every day in the newspaper saying, well, so-and-so's out because they got a low bond and they, com they committed another, another crime. To me, it's you have the discretion. You have the facts in front of you. You know where we are as a city and a parish. The, the, you need to err on the side of avoiding any of those bad consequences which have been occurring for far too often, mm -hmm. far too recently. Make those tough decisions and ensure that that bond and bail is correct and not low. That is, that is a way a judge can impact and have a say-so in how, how this crime issue keeps pervading throughout the parish. He is Jordan Faircloth running for uh, district judge in the 19th JDC. Stick around on Facebook Live. We're going to talk a little issue baseball in the break. Uh, in the meanwhile, early voting opens tomorrow. I appreciate your time this morning. Absolutely, Brian. We have got to get you to your money now on Talk 107.3 FM. After that, we're going to step outside of East Baton Rouge Parish for the outside end. Right now, it is 750. That was two seconds short. Sorry. 
I'm actually I'm doing a Kalata show later this morning. What? Yep. I texted him too. He said, "How about uh, I think he said eight fifteen. I said, "Well, I'm doing Brain at three seven thirty five, so we're right down the road." Yep. We'll do that. So, uh, and and in your honor, I thought about wearing a tie. Then I remember our conversation. You said tie goes to the runner. So I said, "I ain't wearing no ties. <laughs> I don't like wearing ties. Most folks. Don't I like hate wearing ties. ties. I really hate wearing ties. It's so it serves no real purpose." I literally other I than the choke it choke a fat guy. Yes. Yeah. When I put one on, I think, what is this person wearing? What is he putting on? Some dandy back in the seventeen hundreds. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're, yes. you're placating somebody who was a who was a dandy back then and remains so now. All right, LSU baseball. Number one across the board. Um, is this the best LSU team you've ever seen? No, because the pitching, particularly the relief pitching kind of scares me. There are some holes in there. Uh, mm-hmm. Offensively, I think you can make that argument, especially considering, you know, the, I think it's the, 90, the 97 team had hit 180-some-odd home runs. I mean, it's different time, different era, different back. Sure. No, absolutely. But overall, offensively, gosh, how could you not say this isn't one of the best, if not the best? Two grand uh, slams last night. Two grand. It's 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 every it's every game. It's somebody different. It's all nine players in the in the batting order. It's you don't know where it's coming from. And you have guys coming off the bench who could likely do the same, but there's just not enough to, not enough room for them. Right. It's so offensively, and then of course with Skeens, who, my goodness, uh, when he's done this year, I don't know how you, you can't say well this is probably the best pitching season performance in LSU baseball Which history. Makes the pitching situation so weird because you have yeah. you have better than Ben McDonald. And respect to Ben McDonald, but like Skeens this combination of speed control and movement. I mean it's just he he's on the next level already. He when the draft hits, when the draft is this summer, gosh they change the dates, I guess it's still June or July. He could be in a big league uniform stadium by September. Yeah. The only reason he wouldn't be is because, well, maybe he pitched too much during the college season, and you don't want to overuse him. Okay, so take one month off and come back. Right. But he's 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 ready for the big leagues right now. Yeah. I mean, and you don't often say that. You said that about Ben McDonald, Aaron Nola, Aaron Nola some, other, yeah. some other guys maybe. Uh, but, I mean, you have him, and, and Ty Floyd's done awesome. I yeah. Mean, if you didn't have – schemes to compare him to you'd say my gosh Ty Floyd look at look at the season he's had this is an all-american oh, year he's a Friday night starter at yeah. probably 11 of the schools at, in the in the conference yes and it's after that it goes okay well what do you do for game three or the Sunday but you know what every team has that issue hey no no you don't have three deep across the country from any school it's just it just said maybe Tennessee preseason though we were told we were at least four deep Yes. So what's the likelihood that we see, like, let's just take Thatcher Hurd. Mm-hmm. Can he turn the corner in the time left? Absolutely. Okay, so let me re-ask the original question. Do we still have the possibility for this to be the best team? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I'll, yes. Put it that way, yes. I, I wouldn't say that it's a stone cold cinch lock, but um, if, if this team progresses, makes it to Omaha, of course, there's only one standard at LSU. You have to win the whole enchilada. I mean, that guy's part of two teams that went to the College World Series, and we didn't win it, and it's gone and forgotten. That's just that's just the reality of LSU baseball. Yeah. Um, and we've seen in so many years in the past where seemingly out of nowhere at the end of the season, a pitcher or two, a hitter or two, shows up who wasn't there during the season. You know, like, wait. Trey Hodges in 2000. Yeah. Just to show my age. It's like, wait. No, no. It's, what, wait, right. what happened? Wait, Trey Hodges, he, look at his stats. He, he stunk all year. Yeah. Okay, well, his arm wasn't right. He was coming off surgery. He kind of hit his groove. He found his release point. Then it was game over. Oh, Warren Morris, for that matter. Warren Morris. Hurt all year. You Warren know? Morris hurt, hurt all year. You get to the regional. You get to Omaha. He says, Skip, you know what? Put my me. hand's feeling pretty good. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you saw what happened. So, baseball's a funny game. People step up unexpectedly, and with 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 Jay as the coach, he will find those people whenever the time comes for the postseason. That us as fans who don't go to practice and don't know the ins and outs may say, "Wait, why is he playing? You know, Johnny Smith? Why is he pitching? He hadn't done nothing all year." Right. Well, you haven't seen the inter squad games and the bullpens he's been throwing, and he our hitters can't touch him for 
some reason, he found his release point, he found how to throw his pitch differently, whatever it may be. Those things I think will happen, and we'll be surprised with a couple of guys that show up. Do you have a name who's the pitcher that we're not seeing enough from now that we're going to before it's all over? Uh, who's the Javen Coleman? <laughs> <laughs> Well, shit, that was an easier softball than my resume question. Shit. Um, I would say him won, but you just never know with somebody who hasn't pitched and battled arm injuries. Garrett Edwards was was that guy. Edwards was that guy. Gosh, yeah. and then, you know, baseball's funny now. I, I'm going to stick with, you know, I think Hurd's going to come around. Me too. Me too. Gonna come around. Yeah. It's. Appreciate give, you. Uh, give Jordy a big bro hug for me. Tell him I miss him. I'll, I'll hopefully talk to him soon. I will. I will. 